Hey guys, in this video, we're talking about the real exchange rate, the nominal exchange rate, and the purchasing power parity exchange rate. Guys, if you watch this whole video all the way through, you are going to understand those three exchange rates so much better, how they relate to each other. It's going to be a profitable video for you. Here's the thing, guys. This video has a task, and the task sounds simple, but it's not. Here is the task. We're going to ask ourselves, when a currency depreciates, what happens to that country's net exports? It sounds simple. In fact, a lot of us go, oh, I know that answer. Net exports is going to go up. But mm, no, you've already jumped the gun because when a currency depreciates, the economist says, oh, wait, did it depreciate in nominal terms or real terms? Here's the deal, guys. The economist focuses on a depreciation in real terms, not nominal terms. And our 101 courses, including mine sometimes, I have to admit, based on time, oftentimes kind of gloss over the fact that you really need to be focusing on whether the exchange rate changed in real terms. Nominal terms is not the key to figuring out what happened in net exports. Let me say a quick kind of equivalency here, okay? Let's say that we find out that the nominal wage in a country from one year to the next went up by 3%. We could say, okay, that nominal wage, let's say people were paying, being paid $1,000 a week on average, okay, in, uh, in a year. And I wanna say it that way because I want you to hear me define their wage, the value of their wage, define the value of their wage in terms of a currency, and currency amount, $1,000 thousand dollars right that's their nominal wage so their nominal wage was one thousand dollars oh that's their nominal wage we're defining it in a currency amount one thousand dollars and then it goes to one thousand thirty that's a three percent increase and then i say well are they are our workers can we expect them now to buy more goods and services the economists and i think you also might also say well wait i have no idea if their nominal wage goes up by three percent they're gonna buy more goods and services i need to know what happened to the prices of goods and services exactly right what happened to the price level in that country if the price level went up by 5%, their real wage actually went down and they might end up buying less goods and services. So the key to figuring out whether workers are going to buy more goods and services or less goods and services is not by looking at what happened to their nominal wage. Remember, 3% increase in nominal wage. We'd say what happened to their real wage, which means we have to focus on what's happening to price levels, right? Same thing for exchange rates, okay? We need to understand what's happening to the real exchange rate, not the nominal exchange rate. We need to understand about what's happening to the real exchange rate to answer our question, what's gonna to happen to net exports. So that's a big setup. Hopefully you're with me. Let's get going. You're gonna learn so much, okay? Here's the deal. Let's start off with a given nominal exchange rate. And it makes sense to say the nominal exchange rate is given because we live in a nominal world and that's what happens. We give exchange rates in nominal terms. If I go to Google and say, hey, what is the exchange rate between Mexico and the United States? might come out one USD to 16 pesos. It's going to give me a nominal answer. And here's what I mean by that to make sure we are so clear. We are defining the value of one USD in terms of a currency and the amount of a currency, 16 pesos. Oh, that's a nominal amount. When you define anything in the amount of a currency, whether it's USD, pesos, or anything, you're doing it in nominal terms. Oh, that's the nominal exchange rate, one USD to 16 pesos. Now, here's the thing is we need to be able to find the real exchange rate. So let's do that. Now, the formula we'll find in a lot of textbooks, and we don't love formulas at Econ Busters, okay? But I'm going to give it to you, and then I'm going to tell you how I want you to think about it. The formula you're going to find is the nominal exchange rate, so 16 pesos over 1 USD times the price of a market basket in the United States uh, priced in USD uh, over the price of a market basket, that same market basket in Mexico priced in pesos. If you do that, you'll get the real exchange rate. But again, we don't love formulas. So what I want to say is what you do when you find the real exchange rate is you take the nominal exchange rate, you have to have the nominal exchange rate, and then find the purchasing power parity exchange rate. So let's go ahead and do that. And that's really simple, guys. We want a buying power equivalency exchange rate, okay? So how we do that is we just take a market basket. That's what this funky looking thing is supposed to be is a market basket. And we price this market basket in Mexico. And we find out, oh, it's priced at 800 pesos in Mexico. You can buy this market basket for 800 pesos in Mexico. Cool. Same exact market basket. That's why I drew one market basket. I want you to understand it's the same market basket, same market basket in the United States, same goods and services, same quality, same quantity of those goods and services. The guys, 100 USD. You can buy it for 100 USD in the United States. Ah, that's all I need. Just this information to find the purchasing power parity. In fact, that is the PPP exchange rate. All I'm going to do now is take the 800 pesos and put it over. Uh, 100 USD. So I just took that data 
and put it into this uh, exchange rate, right? Or into a fraction, which is an exchange rate, okay? So now again, this is not a rate at which we're actually exchanging currencies. This exchange rate represents buying power equivalents, purchasing power parity. That's what it's representing. 100 USD in the United States has the buying power equivalents of 800 pesos in Mexico. And we call that the buying power uh, equivalents exchange rate or purchasing power parity exchange rate, okay? Now, what we're gonna do with this, simple to find, right? Just did it right there. That thing is we're gonna get in terms of one USD. So let's just get in terms of one USD. Awesome, that's just a proportion, right? Very simple, take 100 divided by 100 and you get one USD. Since I divided the denominator by 100, divide the uh, numerator by 100, right? 800 divided by 100 gets me eight pesos. Again, same thing, okay? But now I've got in terms of one USD. Still, that's my purchasing power parity exchange rate. So. Here we go. How do you find the real exchange rate? You take a nominal exchange rate, got that, oftentimes given, right? Okay, at least you can find it in the real world. Now go find your purchasing power parity exchange rate. And now what you do is multiply the two together, but you want to get rid of the currencies. Remember, we don't want the things defined in currencies. We need the currencies to cancel out. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our 16 pesos over one USD, okay? That was again, just our nominal exchange rate. No big deal times that, but I'm gonna invert it. Now remember, it's just showing me an equivalence. It doesn't matter if I have the one USD on top or the one USD on the bottom. It's just saying one USD is equivalent in buying power to eight pesos. That's all it's saying. So I'm gonna invert it. Why am I inverting it? To get the currencies to cancel out. So I've got one USD over eight pesos. Okay, and again, the conceptual thing that I want us to remember is I'm going from nominal to real. I need my currencies to cancel out. USD cancels, pesos cancel, 16 uh, divided by eight gives me two. Ah, that's my real exchange rate. That's representing purchasing power, okay? What's happening to purchasing power when I go through the exchange market and exchange based on the nominal rate. Let me say it this way, okay? So important. What we're saying with this two right here is we're saying if I'm in the United States and I go through the exchange market and I exchange based on the nominal rate, I'm gonna find that my purchasing power has doubled. That's what this is telling me, this real exchange rate, that my purchasing power has doubled as I go into, the, into Mexico, okay? Now, now, this is what's happening for somebody from Mexico going to the United States, right? They go through the exchange market. Again, they exchange based on the nominal rate right there. They're going to find their purchasing power has been cut in half, all right? Their purchasing power has been cut in half. So you just invert that over. That's one half. That's what's happening. That's their real exchange rate, okay? Mexico, uh, Mexico, uh, the, the peso, the exchange rate, the real exchange rate of the peso to dollars, okay, versus the dollar to pesos. So there we go. We've got the real exchange rate. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna have the currency depreciate in nominal terms, okay? So what currency? The USDs. The USD is gonna depreciate. One USD buys 16 pesos? No, longer, that's no longer the case. It's now one USD buys eight pesos. Okay, definitely the USD has lost value, it's depreciated, and again, the peso therefore has appreciated, right? 16 pesos to get one USD, now it just takes eight pesos to get one USD. The peso has gone up in value, it's appreciated, the dollar has depreciated in nominal terms. What's gonna happen to net exports? No, don't answer it. Economists would not answer that question. They say, whoa, 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 I can't answer that until you tell me what happened to price levels. And let's say that this is what happened, that that market basket in the United States now costs 200 USD, no longer 100 USD. In fact, you could think this might've been the reason the dollar depreciated. Look at this. We had a lot more inflation or, or we had, they didn't have any inflation. So we had a lot of inflation. They didn't have any inflation. We had um, inflation relative to Mexico. Oh, maybe that's why the dollar depreciated. So if that was the case that this also happened at the same time this happened, we go find our real exchange rate. All right. So now I've got 200 to 800. So very simple, right? Get rid of that 100, make that 200, right? Now it's 200. Now divide both of these by 200. That's going to be four over one, four over one. Let's go find the real exchange rate, right? Get rid of that. And now I'm going to invert that. So one USD, four pesos. I'm going to put my four pesos. But guys, I'm not done because remember, it's no longer 16 to one in nominal terms. It's the nominal exchange rate. Nominal exchange rate went to eight pesos to one USD. So here we go. I'm going to move that. Eight pesos to one USD. I do the math. Oh, wait, the real exchange rate didn't change. And guess what? 
net exports therefore would not change. That's right. Net exports wouldn't change. Here's the deal. What's happening to the buying power of the American as they go through the exchange market and exchange based on the new nominal exchange rate? Nothing. Okay. They had, they saw their buying power would double and it would still double. So they're not going to buy any more imports. The person from Mexico, right? It used to be when they went through the exchange market, exchange based on the old nominal rate. Now they're changing on the new nominal rate. Well, on the old one, it was cut in half. Now on the new one, okay, again, right here, this type of situation, they they still find their buying power being cut in half. They're not going to buy any more U.S. goods and services, so U.S. exports aren't going to change either. Here is the key. If the real exchange rate doesn't change, U.S. net exports are not going to change. So let's have one example in which we change the real exchange rate so we can see those net exports changing. So here we go. I'm going to get rid of that right there. All right, we can get rid of that, get rid of that. And we get rid of that and we go back in time. All right, so here we go. Last scenario. I'm gonna have the exchange rate depreciate in nominal terms again. Okay, last time it depreciated in nominal terms, but we didn't see a change in net exports because the real exchange rate didn't change. Keep that in mind, right? Last time it changed it in nominal terms, but the real exchange rate didn't change, so net exports didn't change. Now I'm having it depreciate in nominal terms, but I'm gonna have it depreciate in real terms also because here's what I'm gonna say nothing is gonna happen. Remember, it was. 100 to and 800. I'm going to go back and just say, oh, nothing happened to the price of our market basket in either country. Oh, okay. Price levels didn't change. Okay. Price levels stayed the same. All right. Given that now I've got 800 over 100, right? 800, 100. That's my Percy power parity. Divide both by 100, eight pesos over one USD. Let's kind of get rid of all of this stuff so that we just make sure we don't make any mistakes. All right. All right. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to invert it because I want those currencies to cancel out. So just one USD, eight pesos. What's my new nominal exchange rate? Oh, it's eight pesos to one USD. So eight pesos to one USD. Oh, my real exchange rate went from two to one. My real exchange rate shows a depreciation in real terms. Here's the deal for the American. Remember, they used to go through the exchange market and they would exchange based on the nominal rate and they see their purchasing power double. That's what that uh, real exchange rate of two was showing. Okay. Now, when they take their money through the exchange market, heading into Mexico, okay, or wanting to buy Mexican goods and services, okay, when they take that, those dollars to the exchange market, exchange based on the nominal rate, guess what? Their purchasing power is staying the same. Okay. It's not doubling at all. So what does that mean? Oh, wow. I'm going to buy less of this stuff now. When it doubled, I would buy quite a bit, but now I go through, nothing happens. It stays the same. I'm going to buy less of those goods and services. So guess what? U.S. imports go down. Now, for the person from Mexico, right? What was the old real exchange rate? Remember, it was one half for the person from Mexico, right? They would go through the exchange market and they would see their purchasing power being cut in half as they went into the United States. Now, when they go through the exchange market and exchange based on my new nominal rate, guess what? Their purchasing power stays the same. It's not being cut in half. Oh, okay. Wow. That means I'm increasing my purchasing power is increasing. Again, the peso to dollars exchange rate went from one half to one. Oh, okay. I'm going to buy more U.S. goods and services now, okay, than before, okay? Again, when it was cut in half, that, that, that certainly hurt how many I was going to buy. Now it stays the same. I'm certainly buying more than I used to. U.S. exports exports go up, U.S. exports go up, U.S. imports go down, net exports go up. Whew. Let's review, okay? When you are asked, okay, what happens to net exports when a currency changes value? The real economists, that's right, the PhD economists out there, they say, wait, wait, I need to know, did exchange rates change in nominal terms or real terms? The same way I think we know that if we hear there's a wage change in nominal terms, we say, okay, that was just a change in nominal terms. What happened to a person's real wage? The economist says the same type, has the same type of thinking for exchange rates, okay? Okay, I, I need to not know what happened to nominal exchange rates. I need to know what happened to real exchange rates. It's the real exchange rate that tells us what's going to happen to a country's net exports. That's why so often on tests that we get out there and you'll hear something like, oh, the dollar depreciated or something like that. And they oftentimes will be talking about nominal terms and then they might throw in a little sentence and assuming price levels stayed the same in the two countries. Oh, okay. So that means if the if depreciated nominal terms in the country and the, and the price level stayed the same, oh, then it also depreciated 
in real terms. Go back to that wage one more time. Guys, your nominal wage goes up, price levels stay the same. Oh, my real wage went up then. Same type of idea right there, okay? So again, we need to know what happened to the real exchange rate to make a determination what's happening to a country's net exports. It's not about the nominal exchange rate. I hope that video made sense to you. <laughs> I hope it's profitable to you. We'll see you in another video.